I think one of the most important questions I'm going to ask you is for anybody that's thinking about transitioning genders, do you have any advice for them before they go through with it? Wow. Yeah, it's tough. I would say um, there used to be these protocols, and it's a Harry Benjamin protocols, and now they do this W paths and some other stuff, but that's all been changed to meet the current um, narrative or ideology, whatever they want. So they're pushing people through really fast. And so they took the protocols have all changed. And the protocols I'm talking about are the amount of counseling sessions you have to do before you can start any hormones or anything else. It's the amount of um, time you spend living as the, uh, it's a, like a real life experience is what they call it. And so if I was gonna transition from male to female, I would have to do 30 mental health counseling sessions and have that signed off that I did 30 sessions talking about all this stuff and really digging in deep. And I'd also have to um, live the real life experience as, a, as the gender you're going into, male or female. So I would have had to live as the female gender, as a woman, trans woman, for a year. And then at that time, then you would get the paperwork and all the stuff, then you could start doing the hormones and all the other stuff. Now all of that has changed and they basically can do no sessions you can walk in there and just say, I'm transgender, and then you start getting hormones and everything else. Pretty much, or it's one session or something, it's a signature. But the problem with that also is that they're scamming the whole system, is that you can get whatever paperwork you want for money. So you go into those um, crooked psychiatrists or whatever, or whoever would give you the paper, and you pay them enough money and they're gonna say 30 sessions or whatever. So there's a lot of gaming going on. But they don't even require 30 sessions, they don't even require any sessions. You can walk in on session one, and you'll be on hormones, and then a week later, you might be getting surgery. So it's just so incredibly fast, and you're not really investigating with a professional. And that's why, I mean, I, I kind of bash the psychology, um, the whole you know group pretty badly because of what they're allowing to happen. Now, just like I said, the doctors are kind of stuck in the middle between insurance and money and, and the administration. It's gonna be the same thing with a psychologist. So there's something going on that they will not admit to the doctors want a minute, the psychologists want a minute. And if those folks start standing up, then this will change. If the doctors start standing up and telling the truth, this will change. Psychologists will start standing up, telling the truth, this will change. But just like everybody else, we're all afraid. The cancel culture and losing your job and everything else and fines, you'll be imprisoned. You know, it's just ridiculous. So one of these days, if somebody starts standing up and they start doing it, and I feel like I'm almost the first one, like really talking about some of the deep stuff. And Courtney's the same thing. Like we both said a lot of stuff today that's not really out there, I don't think. You know, and if it is out there, it's kind of hidden or they just kind of, they mark it with those stupid little labels talking about how bad this person is because they're, and it might happen, this one too, that <clears throat> we're gonna be um, marked as haters and as phobias and all the other stuff, which is totally opposite of who we are as people. And the fact is, is you're transgender and you're a good person, you did it all as an adult and whatever, and you're not doing all these rainbow flags and love bombing and doing all that stuff, then I, don't, I would never have a problem ever and you would probably be a friend of mine. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't have any problem with that. But when you start doing all the things with all those love bombing, all these rainbow flags, and all this push towards it, and the push, like I said, is not the people, and it's not the doctors, it's money. You know, and like I said, these doctors have these gender clinics and are making $450,000 per surgery, which is just ridiculous. So in every year, you have these gender clinics with one doctor making millions for the, for the, school, for the hospital. They're pulling in huge money. And the really big hospitals, the university-connected hospitals, the ones that are really big, like Johns Hopkins and all the rest of them, they're pulling in you know, hundreds of millions of dollars for gender stuff. Now, are they gonna give that up very easily? No, they're not. And they're gonna push these doctors. And these doctors are caught. And if they don't do the job, they're fired. And another doctor will take the place. And that's the problem. If these doctors start speaking up, and I have a lot of connections with doctors because they have heard me speak up and speak just like I'm speaking right now. And they call me and they talk to me, and they're giving me some of the inside info about the cost and about this and about how the shortcuts are being taken. These doctors need to start standing up. You took a Hippocratic oath, you know? And you should be healing people, not damaging them. You know, and just like I said, out of those hundred 
transgender people with all these surgeries and all that other stuff, just like Chloe, and we keep hearing Chloe call up because she's one of the first adults that are coming out really hardcore as detransitioning and all that. And I can't stand that word because there's no such thing. It never happened in the first place, and it's not a D. You know, it's not a detransition because it didn't happen. The um, the thing with Chloe, though, she's one of the first adults that had, at 15 years old, a double mastectomy. There's going to be a lot more of these kids that had it happen when they were kids. And as they grow up, they're starting to learn this stuff. Now, in Sweden, you can see it. And you can look this data up if you want to. There's this Swedish J-curve with all this gender ideology and all this gender stuff. The Swedes saw it going like normal for decades, just like this, because the Swedes are about 20 years ahead of us. They've been doing this for a long time. It is Sweden, yeah, it is. So it goes like this, and then suddenly it goes, and it shoots way up. And it, it was like 1,500% increase, or no, that was might have been non-binary. But there's these huge increases, like ridiculous. And then the Swedish government were going, what is going on here? And they put a, brakes on. And they started doing, re-looking at it and really studying it and finding out. Because this isn't normal. For them to go from a line like this for decades and then choosh, something happened. And that's what's happening in America right now. And so why can't the American government look at this and take a look at all this other data and know that this is happening right now in America? And if we don't put the brakes on it, it's going to get worse. And you're going to have all these kids who are going to be damaged and really hurt. All these parents. You think we have some problems right now? Ten years from right now, five years from right now, you're going to start seeing what I'm talking about. Yeah. And that's the problem. So in the wrap-up is that I don't, have, I don't have fear of transgender. I don't have homophobia, transphobia, or any of those phobias. That is a tactic being used. It's a ridicule tactic to make us stop, and make us shut up. I'm not going to shut up. And the more they push me and try to make me shut up, I'm going to talk louder. You know, I'm going to talk more. And like I said, I don't want to do these podcasts. I don't want to go on the news. I did that thing with Tucker Carlson one time, and it was pretty quick. It was like four minutes. Or it was quick. And basically what I said there, I'm still standing by. I said, I love people, and I love humanity. I love people, and I love our world, and, and I respect our world, and I respect us as human beings and this body that I have that was given by the grace of God. And I think that we need to stop all this damage. You know, there, there has to be something. And like I said earlier, it's like, yeah, I'm a Christian, but it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about right now. I'm a human being that went through something. I went through something that damaged me, and I did it all as an adult. And now I'm looking at what they're doing now to the kids. So it has nothing to do with religion or anything else. Take that off the table. If you're a human being and you had something happen to you as an adult, and then you start looking down there and start seeing kids, the same thing's happening to them, wouldn't you want to speak up? You know, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's the right thing to do, you know? And so what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to save all those kids that are pulling into this that are not. They have gender dysphoria. They have all kinds of other things. They have depression, anxiety. They're just teenagers with hormones, and they're just not liked, or they hate their bodies, or they're just growing up, you know? They don't have a chance. And so this reminds me of a story that will give you a little more um, view into who I am and, and how far I will push stuff. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.